to the very first episode of Behind the Screen. In this series, you're gonna take a deeper dive into exactly what goes on behind the scenes as I'm preparing for upcoming sessions of our D&D home game that we stream on Twitch.tv. I'm your DIY Dungeon Master, my name is Nick, and you're tuned in till Sick Till Death. Throughout this series, you see crafting projects, mini painting, terrain building, but also the various aspects of world building and campaign storytelling that goes into this amazing game that is Dungeons and Dragons. In this episode, we thought it fitting to show you what I have behind my screen and what I use to run my game. So without further ado, why don't you come here and we'll show you what's behind the screen. Okay, so for starters, I'm not here to tell you how to run your game or these are the things that you need behind your screen to run your game. This isn't a top 10 list for best DM tools to have behind your screen. I'm here to tell you what I use in my games and you can pick and choose, borrow what you like. If you don't like some things, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm here for that. Um, for starters, will show you what I have behind my, my actual DM screen. So uh, to begin, I have this wooden DM screen here that was actually a gift from my players as a birthday gift a few years back. It was probably one of the coolest gifts a DM could get. Um, and this screen is great because it has uh, some extra amenities. It has these um, magnetized wooden slats that you can add certain um, additional things to your screen. I also have the D&D branded screen here, and this has various information, basic rules, conditions, um, set certain DCs, uh, travel speeds, all sorts of things along those lines. Now, I've added some things to this screen as well, and for starters, I've taken the food and lodgings information and I've kind of added a more detailed list of some food items, prices, things like that. Um, there's been so many times where I'm asked what's on the menu at the local tavern and this just makes it a lot easier for me to go in, come up with something instead of saying meat pie like I've said a million times. So there's that but then for more of the more helpful in the heat of the moment type things. I have um, concentration, a reminder for concentration that's right by my conditions. More times than not, I will forget about concentration. So I like to have that front and center in my screen to kind of remind me to remind my players that they're concentrating on certain spells. Near that, I also have a reminder to reset magical uh, charges on magical items. There's been so many times where my players forget to roll at the top of the day and uh, this is just a great way to remind them. It's dawn, roll some charges for your magical items if you have to. In addition to that, I also have a wind walk speed, a little cheat sheet here. Now my druid recently acquired wind walk so I have this by my uh, travel speeds and distances chart, and this is just helpful for when he casts the spell. We know how far he can go, how fast he can go, um, what distance he can make up in the spell's duration, so that's very helpful to have. Now, in the um, additional section for the wooden screen, I have some things like a uh, weather chart, healing potions, uh, I have the prices and how many dice to roll for those healing potions. I also have languages that the players may encounter in the world, and then I also have player languages, like the languages that my players know, and then next to that is the passive stats. So this is a great way for me to know if a player catches something maybe out of the corner of their eye without them actively saying a million times, do I see something? It's, it's, a, it's a good way to um, make them aware that things might be happening in the background. So 
that's there. And that's pretty much what I have behind my actual screen. But if you look, there's also a secondary screen. And this screen is basically a control center or a central hub for a lot of the things that I have running in the background that helps me run my game. So we run D&D Beyond, so I'll always have like my campaign information, player character sheets possibly if I need to reference them, and also NPC uh, character sheets. I don't use the initiative and encounter tracker per se, but I'll often have that up if I need to reference a monster creature or NPC that they may be encountering either in an upcoming battle or in a certain engagement or interaction amongst them. So on top of that, I'll have my Google Drive open that has various things like maps, family and city crests, all those little things. And what I'll do is I'll put those onto a screen that I have on that far wall there. So I'll usually put like a map of the uh, general area and I have that run through a wireless HDMI transmitter. I also run my game audio through this PC, and what I use for that is BattleBards, and BattleBards is an awesome audio tool. I basically use that to run any songs or sound effects for my game. Um, this, what you're looking at here, is a soundboard that you can set up to playlists at the same time. So I'll usually run like battles and tension or peaceful playlist and tension. I also have like a taverns and towns playlist. So this is a great way to immerse your players, get the scene set for them as you are describing a scene or as they're role playing in a certain scenario. Now they are running or they're about to be running a closed beta uh, they're going to be upgrading their system. So once that beta is open, I may make a video and show you exactly what I do while I'm running my game. Um, but if you haven't heard of BattleBards, definitely check it out. It's a great way to um, incorporate some, some game audio into your game if you don't do so already. On top of that, now I have my DM binder. I obviously have dice, probably have too many dice, but that is another story. And then I have various um, tools and templates and other things that, that help immerse my players. So first off, here we have um, condition rings. So this is a great way to either remind yourself or remind your players of various things that are happening in the chaos of combat. Um, I've witnessed my players so many times staring at their, their character sheet, trying to figure out what they're about to do for their upcoming turn. They pick their head up and they're like, why is so-and-so prone? Why is this happening? It's, it's a good way to remind them, but also remind me as I'm running a, an encounter with X amount of creatures and NPCs that, um, definitely helps to have some condition rings. Now, I went and printed these out on my 3D printer. Uh, there's definitely uh, ones that you can purchase as well, but you could even do something simple as what Matt Mercer used to do, and he used to take the rings that are at the bottom of the soda bottle caps, um, and you could simply just put that around your mini. Um, whatever, helps you in your situation, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. So those are the condition rings. On top of that, I have some spell templates. So these I have printed out. I have like one for Entangle, one for like Fog, Spirit Guardians. I also have created some. So this one is just some plastic that you can cut with some some shears and then I took a Dremel and I shaved down the end so we're not slicing our fingers all the time. I put this to an inch by inch grid. I marked out everything so this covers anything from a cube to sphere in a 20 foot radius. And then I also have 
cones for various spells that have a cone effect or dragon breath, things along those lines. On top of that, I have a couple other useful things here. Um, my players have been uh, getting a little bit more powerful, so that means some of them are able to fly now. So I have some flight stands. I also have these flight stands, which are pretty cool. These were printed out on a 3D printer as well. They come in a variety of heights. Um, these are very useful. So if you don't want to go the route of buying them, um, you can definitely do that. Or you can, you know, I, I, I used to use little stands, things here and there to um, give the appeal like they're flying now. If you want to go out and purchase some, they have a bunch on Amazon and other places like that. I personally went with the Axe and Shield. They are great build quality. They also have the grids and they're very, um, they're very cool in the sense that you can just uh, pop them out, adjust the height. It's, it's a very uh, quick thing to use. So those are the flight stands. Aside from that, we also have um, on this table here various miniatures that I kind of pre-staged. So there's often times where I know a battle may possibly take place or some sort of encounter may take place. So I like to pre-stage, you know, creatures and monsters that my players might encounter. I also have various NPCs that my players may interact with. But then I also have um, various beasts that my players may either wild shape or polymorph into. Uh, this makes my game run much smoother, so as I've been saying, there's less downtime on my side, and that allows my players more time to think and strategize and do all those sorts of things. Now I also have some pretty cool spell templates that I use, or not spell templates, but um, spell effects that I use. Uh, this just provides a little bit of visual aid when you're in a um, sort of combat scenario. These are also very useful to have as well. So that pretty much does it for the technical aspect, the tools, things along those lines. Now to the binder. Um, I print out most of my session notes for that day's session. I also have a scratch pad. Uh, there will be times where I will award my players extra XP, um, whether they make a hero play or take a risk or even play it safe sometimes. So I, I write that down here. I will also write down uh, various notes if I know something is going to come up in an upcoming session and a player asks me a question or they roll really high on an arcana check or something like that. I'll put that down here so I can then transcribe it into my D&D &D, uh, document that I have on my PC. Now, I will also have um, battle maps. So this is very useful for whether you're having an encounter with some actual terrain or you're doing theater of the mind, this kind of helps set the scene and help your players figure out how they want to interact with various NPCs, enemies, or, you know, creatures that they may encounter in a battle map. And I also print out stat blocks for various NPCs and creatures. If I'm sitting down, I'm usually accessing all of that stuff on D&D Beyond, but when I'm in the midst of battle, I'm usually standing to you know, command the room. So I like to have this stuff printed out alongside my initiative tracker, which is a page that helps me just track round by round, turn by turn, what everyone's doing, what conditions are, they might be under the effect of. So I have all that. Now to the binder. So I have this broken down into a few sections. In the main section, there is 
basically my session notes for that day. And in there, there will be descriptors, dialogue, things like that. There will also be notable locations that they may um, find themselves at. And then also if they're in a city or various locations, I'll put like um, maps and things. So I have a visual aid for myself that'll help me relay some information back to them. In other sections, I will have basically previous session notes. There will be times where my players ask me, two sessions ago, I had a conversation with so-and-so. That will help us all be on the same page as to what happened. We don't get the luxury of playing every week or every month for that matter, so having those notes is definitely helpful. Um, I also put the NPC and PC backstory information in a small section here. I don't usually reference that, but I like to have it there just in case. And then I also have a spot for all the magical items and various rules that are in the world. And then at the very beginning, I have the history of Haven, which is the world that my players live in and play in. And in here, there's going to be various historical aspects to the world. Also some lore that they may run into in various research or engagements with NPCs. And then also maps. I have like some ancient maps and then I also have some maps of the world. Now I put up a map on the flat screen that I have on the far wall there, but these maps will have certain information that the players may not know or they may find out whether it be like um, names of forests, names of lakes, various creatures that may inhabit an area, demographical information, things along those lines. So we have that, but I also have a binder for the ancient history of Haven, and that is on my bookshelf back there. Now, this world was a world that I used to DM back with my high school friends 15, 20 years ago. I know, I'm old, but I figured why not build this world out for my new players will create a new age and that's why it's called the dawn of a new age. Um, it's really cool for my players to run into certain ancient aspects, things that my high school friends did. Now my current players are discovering that and it's, it's a really cool way to kind of bridge the gap from game to game. So on that bookshelf, I also have various D&D &D books, whether it be the PHB, DMG, um, all the supplemental books as well. And then in a shelf beneath all that, I have all the session notes that make up the entirety of this game. So that's pretty much what I have behind my screen. As I said, you don't have to use or implement all of this stuff. If you like things here and there, I would definitely um, love to hear what you like, what you don't like in the comments um, and what you plan on adding, if, if any. Um, if you've stuck with us till the very end of this video, I appreciate you so much. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe for future content. Now, future episodes are going to be a little less formal than this. They're going to be more of a first person view of basically what I'm doing those those couple weeks leading up to our next D&D &D session. So there's going to be crafting and all that sort of stuff, but there's also going to be moments where you catch me at my desk and we are world building, working on various aspects of the story, homebrewing certain things. So if you like what you saw and you're looking forward to future content, as I said, be sure to drop a like, be sure to subscribe for more, and we will catch you guys in the next episode of Behind the Screen. Thanks for watching.